Welcome, welcome here. Welcome if it's your first time and welcome if you're coming back. I'm so glad to have you here. My name is Fran and I am a teddy bear maker based in southwest France in the, in the mountains called the Pyrenees. And sometimes I make videos here about knitting and spinning and natural dyeing. You're here again. Thank you for coming back. It's so lovely to have you here. And I really hope that you're well and that you've been enjoying working on some nice projects in the last few months that we haven't spoken. It's now the month of October, which I can't believe it's nearly the end of the year. Um, it doesn't feel very autumnal here at the moment because the weather has been very hot in the last six weeks and it's been lovely. We've enjoyed some really lovely weather, but it's been quite dry and unseasonally warm, which has been very strange. The last couple of days though it's turned a bit cooler and I can finally put on some more seasonal appropriate um, clothes so I'm really glad to have um, this lovely jumper which was knitted for me and designed by Josh Moll and this is um, a lovely boxy jumper knitted in uh, mo moek yarns, mookie yarns, I can't quite remember how to say it and I'm also wearing a lovely little scarf, which was knitted for me by my dear friend Vivek, um, Vivekki, who's Knit Pearl on Instagram. So yes, I'm not the only one wearing knits though. I have two little friends here with me who I briefly showed you last time and they're both wearing some hot, some warm knits as well. So we have Poppy, and Percy and these are twin mohair bears they're made from the same cloth and I made them one after the other Poppy's the older bear and Percy's the younger bear and I made them about this time last year and I made them for me but they're also prototype bears so Poppy is wearing a Poppy is wearing a hand-knitted outfit. So she's got a little garter stitch cardigan, which is very simple to knit, and then a pair of balloony trousers, which I knitted from, um, this is knitted from hand, uh, naturally dyed yarn that I dyed myself, and the trousers are made from some very precious stash yarn by Isle Yarns. I've had for a long time and Percy is wearing a little elfish hat that's knitted from some De Rerum Natura he's got blue trousers that are also knitted from some De Rerum Natura and then he's got a little hand spun naturally dyed cardigan on so these bears I made a year ago and I made them with the intention of um, doing safety testing on them because one day, very soon I hope, I would like to make teddy bears to sell um, for children. I already make bears for grown-ups um, which are artist bears and they have traditional um, cotter pin joints which are for moving their limbs and that's metal and hardwood and they also have glass eyes so they're not at all suitable for children unfortunately even though that's how the very first teddy bears were made but Percy and his sister Poppy are made from mohair just like those bears but they have um, plastic safety joints inside to move around they have plastic safety eyes which should stay in place and also cannot shatter and apart from that though they're the same as my other bears they're just much bigger because they're cuddly size um, and obviously grown-ups can have them as well but I have to make sure that they're safe for children in order to comply with rules here in the EU so I've had to do lots of testing on them uh, starting with Percy who went in the washing machine because one of my bears had to be 
washed and then both of them went through a series of very vigorous very unkind tests where I had to pod, prod and poke them um, check their seam strength check their um, uh, reliability with um, with my sewing, with their seams, with um, the joints, with the eyes. I had to um, put lots of pressure on them using a wooden spoon. I had to hang them up with some weights on the end to see that nothing would fall off. And then right at the end I had to do something a little bit barbaric, which was I had to set them on fire. Um, I had to hang them up on the clothesline and then um, put them uh, a naked flame beneath them to see whether they would catch fire and the good thing is as I suspected because they're made from natural materials so wool, wool felt and mohair those materials take a much higher temperature to catch fire and they burn very very slowly so the three or eight seconds I can't remember now that we had to hold the flame um, they didn't have time to ignite it just got a little bit singed so yeah that's what I've been working on these last few months um, I think I last recorded back in May when I had just come out of hospital and I was actually still not feeling terribly well um, if you don't know I was in hospital as part of my um, bipolar disorder and I was there for three months this spring. That was quite a hard time for me but I'm really pleased to say that with a combination of medicine and therapy and quite a lot of hard work on my part I'm starting to feel much much better, much more stable and in a much better place than I was back in the spring. So. That's partly why I've been away though from here making videos because I've just wanted to concentrate on my health um, and also there was the summer which um, was a very busy time with the children um, but we had a lovely time going on walks and picnics and playing in streams and going camping. We went to the sea again which was lovely. Um, and now autumn is here and it's crisp and crunchy outside and the hillsides are starting to turn um, a similar colour to this as the ferns turn to bracken and soon the leaves will start turning on the trees. I think the beech trees have already started going that lovely kind of reddish brown, orange, all of those colours together um, and yeah I'm hoping that the cooler weather will be here to stay and we can start enjoying some nice cool walks in the in the mornings and wearing plenty of knitwear. <laughs> There's a lot of flies here today unfortunately because they've been bringing the animals down from the mountain and that makes all the flies come down in the village. Uh, we woke up a couple of evenings ago <laughs> Let's sit you back up. We were waken in the middle of the night a few evenings ago by the loud clanging of bells because the cows here and the sheep um, all wear, well not all of them, some of them wear big bells, big cow bells and the bells are about this big so it was a real noisy clatter as they were coming down the road just outside our house and uh, there's a sheep manure all over the, the path on the way to school for my daughter so it uh, brings the flies with them unfortunately and I can't seem to get rid of these ones from my room so Anyway, I was talking about um, knitwear and I've got some knitting on my needles. So I'm knitting with um, this lovely seaweedy, sort of greenish mustardy yellow that looks more green in the light, but yeah, I'd say it's green actually. And I'm knitting I'm knitting on a little cardigan or well sorry a jumper for the bears so this is knit uh, top down it's a little raglan jumper knit on magic loop and 
I'm knitting with uh, Ralma Finul. I'm not sure of the colourway, but as I said, it's a kind of peaty, greenish, seaweedy, yellowish green. <laughs> I'm not quite sure how else to describe it. It's sort of heathered, so it has this lovely, um, lovely semi-solid colour to it, um, this sort of lovely heathered, I think it must have been dyed on grey wool. And this is my first time knitting finul, with uh, finul, and I'm really enjoying it. It really reminds me of um, Jameson's and Smith's Spindrift, it's fingering weight as well, and it's two-ply, and it's very lightly woolen spun it's not over twisted and it's really pleasant to knit with i'm really really enjoying it and i would definitely like to knit um some more things with it in the future so the pattern i'm knitting is a pattern of my own design and it's a little teddy bear jumper or well it's a cardigan really but i'm just modifying it to make it as a jumper and it's called the little forget me not cardigan can remember for a minute and um, it's a cardigan I designed two or three years ago and I had some lovely lovely ladies last year who test knitted it for me and I'm hoping in the new year that I'm going to make it available for purchase I think it would be really fun to have um, a little pattern of mine put uh, published on Ravelry. I have to look into that to see how it works and I would love this cardigan in the future to be a base for me to do a little bit more designing. I'd love to do some colour work for example on a teddy bear cardigan or a teddy bear jumper. I think that would be ever so nice and I'm also intending not with this one but in a near future um, cast on to have a go at steaking because I think that would be fun too as I've never done it before and I think it would be quite a fun project to learn on as it's just small and hopefully not too nerve-wracking. So yes, that's some knitting that I have on the go. Other than that, I don't really have any knitting projects at the moment. I'm not really in a knitty phase just now. Um, when I last spoke to you, I was very much in a crochet phase, which I'm still working on my crochet blanket. Um, but I don't have it here, and if I were to get it out, it would all just be chaos, because it's balls of yarn mixed up with crochet granny squares mixed up with the beginnings of the blanket. But I was working on it a little bit over the summer, but I sort of waned off after a while but I'm hoping to start knitting with it again because it's a really fun project and I do really really enjoy working on crochet and I had just finished a jumper for my husband and I do have another one cast on but I've not been working on it um, but I would like to knit him a jumper for Christmas so I'd better pull that out actually, I've just realised as I'm talking because um, Christmas will come very quickly I'm sure and I need to make sure that I've got enough time to knit it. I'd also quite like to knit it secretly and I don't know how possible that's going to be but anyway we shall see. But I do have a little bit of soulful stash today to show you. I made a, a, an order with Dererum Natura or Dererum Natura uh, a couple of weeks ago because I needed to buy some yarn also for safety testing so I'm intending to use um, Dererum Natura as the yarn for knitting bear clothes for my children's bears and I have to have the fabric tested in a lab to ensure that there's nothing nasty in the dyes that are used. So I had to buy the darkest colour that they had because that's the one that uses the most dye. So I bought a lovely, um, un no, not natural, uh, dyed black, which I'll just get in a moment. It's in the bag behind you. And it's the colourway Eben, so I think that's ebony. And I'm not at all one who likes 
black. Um, I don't mind natural black, but I don't really like dyed black. So so I'm not really too sure what I'm going to use this for, but I will, once I've sent off my sample, I will have most of the ball left. Um, so this is Ulysse. And Ulysse, I think, is their sports weight. So it's for 3 to 3.5 needles. It's 185 meters for 50 grams. So I think that's the sports weight. Um, if I compare it to the Finul, yeah, it's definitely thicker. But thinking about it, I might see if I've got enough to knit my husband a hat because he, unlike me, really likes wearing black um, black hats on his head um, and I think he's in the market for a new hat. So yeah, I think I might do that with it, but it depends how much I have left after it's been sent off. So anyway, I had to order that and I thought, well, let's make the most of some postage. So I ordered... Um, another ball of Gilead or Gilead I say another ball this is um, just my favorite base of their range and this is my favorite color of their range which is Baleine Bleu And it's a really beautiful blue, um, quite similar to this actually. Although I think this has got some little flecks of black in it. Um, and I actually knitted Percy's trousers with a ball of it. Um, I'll just show you the trousers. So I knitted the trousers bottom up um, and I made them sort of puffy. Because bears are not easy to knit for. <laughs> they have humps on their backs. I'll just show you. Percy won't mind me taking off his clothes. This is the little hand spun cardigan. So this is also the pattern. Um, this is the cardigan version. So this is the little forget-me-not cardigan. And this was knitted from um, the yarn I, I spun and naturally dyed last year or the year before. can't quite remember now. Last year. Yeah, at the beginning of last year when I was in a spinning phase so yes this is the little cardigan it's very simple um i would like to just work out how to do some short row shaping on the back so that it just comes up a little bit higher because bears have um humps or my bears have humps on their back if you can see so he's got a, a hump here that's a traditional teddy bear shape which mirrors um, the humps that bears naturally have which I'm not entirely sure I'm sure some of you will be able to correct me particularly you who live in America but I believe it's fat that they have on the back of their necks um, which I assume is one of the places they make their reserve of fat for the um, for when they hibernate so Teddy bears have this on the back and then obviously my bears are jointed so I have to take that into consideration for the arms and then they're jointed on the bottom as well um, so when they sit down that's quite wide so yes that's why I quite like um, 
sort of baggy trousers that come in at the middle and actually I might make some little braces for these because they do tend to fall down a little bit. These ones are a bit too, a bit too baggy. But I knitted them bottom up um, and then joined them together at the crutch and made a crutch. Um, again, because the crutch on a bear or on, on my teddy bears is quite wide. And he also has a little pixie hat with a pom-pom. Um, but again, it's quite difficult because bears have ears. <laughs> and uh, so aside from making holes for the ears, which I don't always think it looks very nice, um, they don't always sit on very well. And unfortunately, they can't wear berets or beanie style hats, which I did make one a little while ago. There we go. Anyway, that's my sash enhancement and this I'm hoping is going to become a winter hat for me. I haven't quite decided what pattern yet but I'm thinking perhaps the pinecone and mulberry hat by my dear friend Melody of Bee Mandarins because she originally designed that hat in Gilead, Gilead and I think that it would just look really pretty in this yarn so yeah I'm thinking of making that and hoping to cast that on really soon and that's going to be for me um, because I've got quite a lot of knitting for the family coming up I haven't started yet I've been dragging my heels a little bit um, but I'm hoping to start that soon as I'd like to try and have some things ready for the winter um, talking of making for others, I should just finish by sharing what I've been working on for the Magic 3 Mal. So the Magic 3 Mal is a yearly make-along which is hosted by Mimi of the Yarn Chicks podcast. And the idea is that we make three items um, for small people in our lives. So that could be our children, that could be um, family members or children of friends. Or it could be, for example, for a charity. Um, so this year I'm making for my children, well, no, I'm making the knitted items for my children, possibly a sewn item, and the toys are going to be presents for other, other people's children. And um, so the idea is that we make three items, so something to go on the top, which could be a hat or a scarf, a jumper, um, something to go on the bottom, so that could be trousers or tights or leggings or a skirt or a dress or leg warmers or socks, anything that goes on the bottom. Um, and then we make a toy. And I always find the toy making part really, really easy. Um, it's the part it's the part I probably love the most because as you know I'm a toy maker. Um, and I find the rest of it quite hard. But my daughter has requested a skirt from me. She's picked some fabric from my um, fabric stash and my little boy would quite like um, a new hat for winter. So I think I'm gonna just make one set that I'll, um, that I'll enter into the make along. But the toy I have finished and this is the first of a series of little toys that I'm making for babies and toddlers who are about to celebrate birthdays or uh, about to be born. <laughs> so this is a little Waldorf doll. And I've made his head the traditional way um, with, a, with a shaped ball of wool. Um, and then covered it in head fabric and then I've crocheted him a little kind of like a little hat which is his hair and then I've used some uh, I think it's an old pillowcase I just fell in love with the print and I made him a sort of a chunky body um, the idea is that it's for a baby which um, it will sort of um, evolve with um, with the child, the child will sort of grow into it rather than be for really for newborn. Um, but yeah, this is Peter, and I'm just going to knit him a little hat, um, possibly from this yarn actually.
that could be quite that could be quite nice so there we are that's uh that's where i'm up to at the moment with my making lots of things i'm dreaming about um nothing particularly on my needles apart from that little teddy bear jumper but lots of projects and lots of joy i hope coming up in the next few months one of the other reasons i haven't been podcasting for quite a while is i've sort of not really had or felt like i had anything to show you and I don't really want to get into the trap of making stuff so that I can make videos and then making videos so that I can make stuff and then it just becomes this big kind of runaway train of making, 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 making all the time. Um, I'm making things all the time but I don't want to feel like I can't make videos if I don't have anything particularly um, show worthy <laughs> i suppose um i know that this is my space and i can do with it what i want but if this were a knitting podcast uh which it has been up until now there's a sort of a, a particular format that people follow so works in progress finish objects stash enhancement that kind of thing and i don't really feel comfortable following that format anymore because i just find it's too pressured but I would really love to continue exploring video um, as a medium and as a way of telling stories and I would really really love to continue connecting with you. I'm not worried about having millions and millions of followers here, um, subscribers, I just would love to connect with you who are already here and if there's a few new people then great. So I've been giving it a lot of thought over the last few months and what I'd really like to do is kind of transition this cha channel away from the kind of traditional knitting podcast. Although from time to time I'm sure I'll, if I've got knitting I'd love to show you what I'm up to. Um, and I'd like it to become more like a studio vlog. So what really, really lights me up is my toy making and particularly my bears and I just love talking about them, I love showing them, I love explaining how I make them and how things work and I would just really love to, to pop in every couple of weeks or once a month. Oh, hang on, my battery's flashing. There we go. The flies are back though. <laughs> um, yeah, I was just saying I'd really like this place to be a place that I can just share what I'm up to. Um, it might seem like self-promotion, which perhaps in a way it is, but also I just have this passion for teddy bears and making them and hand sewing and natural dye and spinning and knitting. You know, I do love all of those things and I, I just would like to open up the possibilities a little bit for what I can talk about here. Um, would love to have a Patreon. I think it would be a real wonderful discipline for me. It would be a wonderful source of income, hopefully. But just at the moment, I don't feel like I can really commit to that. But I do really love the idea of sitting down and doing studio vlogs. So, yeah, I thought that might be what I could do from time to time. I could actually physically show you what I'm doing and how I do it. Um, I'd love to start having some tutorials up here as well because I'm hoping to start working on my own pattern to share in the new year um, so I would like to have a place where I can um, put up information like tutorials about how to do different techniques and yeah Woolen Hearted for me now has evolved to really be about my bears and I just love my bears and I love making them and I love telling the world about them so let me know what you think what you might feel about this new direction um i don't want to alienate you if you're um here for the knitting um it's just i don't know if i'm here for the knitting anymore so if that doesn't sort of interest you thank you so much for having been here um and i bid you a fond farewell but who knows maybe there'll be a bit of knitting from time to time particularly if I'm going to start working on some projects for my family. So, um, yeah, I'm going to bid you all a fond farewell now. Um, it's lunchtime and I can feel my tummy starting to rumble, so I don't really want that to be on camera. 
but yes take care of yourselves take care of you um let me know what you think about anything that i've shared today let me know what you're working on as well if you're knitting socks or hats or gloves if you're taking part in the make along with mimi and the other magic three malas and um yeah sending you lots of love and warm wishes take care bye bye